Is it better now? I hope so, <laughs> because I just unmuted my microphone and usually that helps. <laughs> so, welcome everyone, one more time. <laughs> One more time, I am Erika of readingschool.com and you are watching No One Has To Be Alone, my weekly open workshop in the Beading School Club and on the Beading School Facebook page. So I see Sunshine and Belinda and Faye and Anita and Kata, Marianne, Annie and some Facebook user friends and Tanya is here. And Honey is here, and Marianske, Kirsten, Ula. Welcome, ladies. If I haven't said, said your name, that then it means that I don't see it. I see it on see you only as Facebook user. And if you would like to like me to see your name so I can greet you personally, which I would love to do, then you can click the link above the video. There is a link. Uh, in the post description and you can grant my program permission to see your name and then i can say hi Anne, and hi jessica and hi one more facebook user <laughs> so today we are going to work on the borinage earrings and actually i don't have a clue how to pronounce them i chose the name for a very specific reason and I will not share the reason yet. <laughs> so I will share it with you in a couple of days. And in the meanwhile, Sherry joined us and Manuela joined us also. Welcome, ladies. Wonderful to see you. Today, we are working on this pair of earrings, but you can also make them into a pendant or even into a bracelet. I have uploaded the printable five for you to no one has to be the lone.com. I will post the link into the comments too. That so if you go to no one has to be the lone.com, then you can download the tutorial. As always, we have two versions available and one version is for free and you can download it if you need a helping hand during the current situation or you can opt for a five euro version and support the broadcast. In any case, I am super happy that you are here and there is one little favor that I would like to ask you. Please, if you like the class, then make sure to invite your friends for the next time and tell them about No One Has To Be The Lone and BeadingSchool.com. I would really, really appreciate it. So let's go on and check what we need for today's earrings. I'm going to hide this picture and show you a big one. And let's see, what do we need? So quick material check. If we start in the middle, then we start with Miyuki Delica beads. I used two different colors, the matte silver ones and this beautiful uh, pale opal sea glass turquoise. This, this is the color that came in your summer spirit box if you grabbed one in July or August. I still love using that color very much. And I think it goes really well with the matte bronze bugle beads and also this pinkish uh, gem duos that I have used. You will also need some three millimeter Preciosa Vicon beads. And I used crystal aurum, full crystal aurum ones. So that means 
that uh, they are fully covered with the gold coating and they are super shiny and beautiful. You will also need some size 15 round seed beads. I used three different colors. You can unify the look by using glass or you can opt for three as I did. There are also some size 11 round Miyuki seed beads included. They are pretty hidden. They are on the outside edge of the motif where two bugle beads and the Preciosa Bicon bead meet. Uh, maybe you can see it slightly on the picture. Mm, the color that I used, it's a matte greenish one. I didn't want any focus on those beads. I wanted to keep the focus on the gem duos. So that's what you need for today. In the meanwhile, Ginny joined us and Eva and Georgi and a Facebook user who is just oh, awaiting a shipment from Beading School today. And Zuzi is here and Martina is here and Sarah is here. And Elena is here too. Welcome, ladies. So nice to see you. And Nicoline and Valika is here too. Valika is, by the way, Valeria is the lady, the super talented lady who knitted. I showed you earlier, I don't have them now, but I showed you er earlier the wrist warmers decorated with uh, with beads that i ordered recently so valeria is the lady who uh, made them from uh, for me thank you so much valeria i love them and wear them daily even today i had them and hi Anne and susan and brit marie hello ladies so before we start one more thing we had such a beautiful jewel posted in uh, the Building School Club today that before we would continue uh, with our class, then I would like to share it on screen because I think it's magnificent and absolutely beautiful. And ladies, please cheer for Connie. Connie is here with us. And Connie beaded this beautiful, beautiful Charlotte necklace with crystal vitriol medium cabochons and then dark browns and lighter green bicon beads. And it came out beautiful and I love it, Connie. Connie is blushing. <laughs> Please don't blush, be proud of yourself. It's so very beautiful. <laughs> I love it, really. I think that Zuzi hasn't posted her version yet in the club, but actually she also beaded the Charlotte uh, necklace recently. She beaded it with only one motif. Connie is, uh, is made with three nice focal pieces and Zuzi beaded it with some of the new happy autumn beads and this is how it came out and it's also really beautiful so thank you so much for these beautiful creations ladies I love them both <laughs> Jeannie loves them also and Belinda and everyone Thank you so much for being kind to each other, ladies. <laughs> Zuzi actually had also another version in Fuchsia and in Turkas. She posted that already, she says. And let's start beading. By the way, also during the broadcast, I will select the winner of the giveaway for the Art Nouveau letter writing set that I uh, would like to gift to one of you uh, who joined the Beating School Academy adventure. So I have copied and printed your lovely comments and sometime along the class, I will select the lucky winner. So this is my original piece that I made and 
as you can see, I used a heart shaped ear stud with some cubic zirconia. And at the bottom, I connected to each other a crystal connector also with a cubic zirconia and with uh, and the glass drop in metal setting. So that's what's hanging from the from the bottom. But you can totally, totally, totally personalize it. And actually, if you go on the last page of the tutorial, then I included some ideas that how in different ways can you join several motifs to each other to be the bigger earrings or to be the bracelet. So as always, I am beading with size uh, 6LB fired line. It's the 0 0.12. I love my uh, uh, black satin color as it is blending in with the beads, but it doesn't leave marks on my fingers or on my blouse or on the beads. And I'm using a size 11 tulip beading needle. I start with the first color of the Delica beads and I pick up six pieces of those. I leave a tail thread of about five to six centi uh, inches, 10, 12 centimeters that I will secure and trim later. I don't tie a knot in this case. I picked up my six beads and then I bead through all of them one more time to join them into a circle. And then I bead through the very first one for a third time too. And then I'm starting a motif that starts with like a square or a circle of, of beads. If they are not too big, then I like to join them in the first circle this way, because this way they are creating a strong enough circle already, so they are not slipping apart. However, there is still a room for a little bit of wiggling and movement for them. So when I add the next round, and in this, round, this case, I am adding in step two, round 15 seed beads between the Miyuki Delica 11s. So they are kind of adjusting to the new situation <laughs> and my thread tension will adjust, will be adjusted. And it does not happen then that the motive will start out wrinkled. I like to tie a knot at the very beginning already when I have big beads in this first circle. So for example, if I had six millimeter fire polished beads, then I would, I would start with a knot. But when I start out with smaller beads, then I am just doing this, that I pick up the beads, I bead through everything one more time, and then I bead through the first bead for a third time too. I am adding my fifth round 15 and I am adding the last one. I am finishing this step by beading a little bit further. I want to finish it when I am exiting the second new bead. How is it going, ladies? I'm curious to hear everyone, nearly everyone except Elena and Zuzi, who are happy for each other to finally meet again. You went silent. I hope you are reading, reading, reading fast. <laughs> and hi, Donna. <laughs> In step three, I am turning to this beautiful sea. Uh, see, the name of the delicacy is something to do with C, C opal, not C opal, I think. Delicas. So now I am adding groups of size 11 delica beads 
always three pieces in between two round 15s that I have added in the previous step. I arrange them in a way that they form a little V shape, a pointy V. And Belinda says that it's going very well for her. I'm happy to hear that, Belinda. With what, uh, what kind of colors are you working today? And Linda says it's her first time just watching right now and waiting on supplies. Thank you for joining us, even without beating Linda. And everyone, let's, let's welcome Linda. We are happy to have you here. And I hope that next time you can join us even with creating. <laughs> A Facebook user friend says, it is going well, except my little foster kitten wants to help. Haha, <laughs> it's quite distracting. <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine. Kittens are nowhere included in the tutorial. So I don't have a solution for the situation, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe fellow cat lovers here, we have lots of, lots of cat lovers here can advice something to keeping cats away from bead mats. And Kirsten says that she's working with gold and red. And I saw somewhere turquoise. Sometimes the comments are all so fast that I don't see everything properly. Or I, did I just want to see turquoise? I don't see it now. Okay, did anyone write turquoise? Does anyone, is anyone using turquoise? I hope so. <laughs> oh, Sasha, I don't see you now. I saw you at the beginning and now I don't see you anymore. Hi, Bonnie, good to see you again. How are you doing? And Maria is here too. <laughs> so I'm adding my third group of Miyuki Delicas. And continuing in the same way. And when we started today, then sunshine i don't still don't see your name i'm sorry i don't know why Anne says that she's using, tur using turquoise gem does and linda says that turquoise is her favorite she's already oh she already fits in we love turquoise <laughs> nicoline is starting now And Nicoline is asking if she was too late. I'm sorry, but I didn't. When I just before the broadcast, I printed the names, then I did not see yours. It wasn't there yet. I'm sorry about that. So I added my sixth. Oh, Belinda is using gold splash jet gem duos. That will be very elegant, I think. <laughs> Do you like the gold splash and the silver splash beads, by the way? There are even copper splash available nowadays. So I added all of the six groups of three milk Delica beads around my motif. And I will continue until I am exiting the middle bead out of a group of three. <laughs> and if you would like to add more bling to your motive, then this would be a good moment, by the way. You could bead back to a round 15 seed bead. And actually, the size of this little circle in the middle, it's perfect for adding a four millimeter. So one rhinestone. <laughs> so 
if you wanted to attach a Suvan rhinestone in the middle, then what you would need to do is to attach it one hole to round 15 seed beads and the other hole running, uh, they run the two holes running across shape. The other hole you would attach to two Miyuki Delica beads. So it's possible to add even a little bit of bling into the middle. And Ginny is using metallic blue iris for the first time. <laughs> Diane loves the design. I'm so happy. <laughs> what kind of colors are you using, Diane? I haven't seen your, uh, your comment yet. Okay, instead of going forwards, I accidentally frogged the last group of three Miyuki Delicas, so I needed to do it again. And now I'm at the proper place and I am prepared to add more during step four. Let's see step four. So I am exiting uh, Miyuki Delica in the middle of a group of three. I pick up around 15 seed bead. I pick up a gem duo and I bead back through the open hole of the gem duo right away. Now without adding more beads. Then I pick up one more round 15 seed bead and I bead through the next middle size 11 Miyuki Delica in the middle of the next group. This is how it looks like. And I will add this combination of beads to every second gap around the motif. There are sec uh, six gaps that I want to fill, always six combinations that I am adding, but this time every second new combination will be uh, different. So my first combination is round 15, gem dual, back through the gem dual, round 15. And the second combination that I am adding is Miyuki Slender Bugle Bead, round 11 seed bead and one more Miyuki slender bugle bead and then I bead through the next Miyuki Delica that is in the middle of the next group of three and then I will add these two groups interchangeably Once the gem duo group and then the bugle bead group and then again gem duo group, bugle bead group, group and so on. And no worries, Diane. Still time to catch up. <laughs> Any you sound dangerous today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Starting out in uh, last December, we started to use quite a lot of bugle beads, Miyuki Slender bugle beads. I think the first one that we beaded together with Miyuki Slender bugle beads, it was the little gift that you received uh, if you if you were part of the, by back then, storytelling advent calendar group, that was the gift on the 24th of December, the Milky Way tutorial. So I think that was the first where we used Miyuki bugle beads. And since then, we use them quite often. And in the past, when only regular bugle beads were available, then I have to say that I was not a 
terribly big fan of bugle beats. However, since these slender bugles are available, then I actually love using them. They are a little bit uh, thinner than the ordinary bugle beads, so I think they are just more elegant and cuter. And also, I have a lot better experience with the sharpness of the edges. The old bugle beads, they were notorious for cutting the thread, but it's rarely happening with me since I started to use the bugle beads, even if we use them in a bezel, like for the star, the shooting star uh, tutorial that so many of you have beaded. What are your thoughts about this? How do you like using the Miyuki bugle beads, the slender bugle beads? Brit Marie is only watching today. I hope you have a nice evening. <laughs> I'm adding now my third combination with the gem duos. Third and last gem duo combination. And then I'm adding the third bugle bead. combination and Diane says I miss you calling them buggle beads it was so charming <laughs> for our newcomers I am continuously learning to pronounce more and more beads in the hopefully correct way Bugle beads was a big change in my life as I started to bead with bugle beads a long, long time ago, nearly 20 years ago, and I called them for 20 years bugle beads. And about a year ago, I discovered that they are called bugle beads and not buggle beads. <laughs> And I'm still not 100% sure about the pronunciation, my pronunciation of fuchsia, fuchsia. But as long as you get it, all is good. <laughs> and Annie says, I love them so much, I bought your whole line. <laughs> then you have 12 colors. I just checked yesterday that we have 12 colors available. <laughs> And Sherry says, the slender bugles are much prettier than the thick ones. I totally, totally agree with you, Sherry. And Judy says, I do use regular bugle beads. Just use thread like Fireline and call out sharp ones when possible. And that's a super good advice. And thank you, Judy. F uh, with me, it was happening. The cutting of the thread was happening even if I used Fireline. I use only Fireline uh, for... 10 years already, I think. But yeah, calling out the, the sharp ones, that's a must to do thing when working with uh, bugle beads, I think. Diane also loves the slender ones, more elegant. And Kata says, I like them a lot. The factory should come with more colors. I agree. I agree. There are not so many colors available. And I would like to talk to some of our distributors who are like between us and the big Miyuki factory about the possibilities. So I really hope that we can get also some more colors next year. And Linda says, I am so addicted to beading. I have a whole room set up just for jewelry made, uh, making. <laughs> that sounds wonderful, Linda. Would you maybe want to, after the broadcast, uh, post a picture about your beading room? I think we would love seeing it if you would like to share. And Elena says, I really love these slender bugles. Before I had a terrible experience with regular ones, but not with this. Linda says, I always use, use a seed bead in between. That's also a good idea, especially for the regular ones, that when your thread is bending in a straight, uh, in a sharp corner over the edge of a bugle, then it's a good idea. Oh, 
Somebody says, only learn to love bugles because of you. <laughs> I'm a dealer. I'm a bugle bead love dealer. <laughs> By the way, I think that many of you started to like the bugle bead beads when we beaded the shooting star motif. And just today, the ladies in the in the lab, Timmy and Andrea, you might have seen the picture in the beading school club. Timmy had a new task uh, as she joined beading school about two months ago. And today she was studying all the different shapes and all the different beautiful colors of the L2 Studio cabochons, the art cabochons that we have at beadingschool.com while taking pictures of some new ones. And one of the new ones that she took picture uh, picture of uh, was a flat round that we use for the uh, the middle round that we use for the shooting star and it is in the fairy dust amethyst color with you know the very beautiful purple one with the gold glitters so that looks really really yummy <laughs> and brit marie says that my motive at the moment looks like a looks like a fidget spinner <laughs> indeed a tiny one <laughs> and in step six okay I uh, in step six six five i was hurrying a bit <laughs> so <laughs> So in step five, I started out from a Miyuki Delica that was like the middle Miyuki Delica in a group of three. Then I beaded through the round 15 seed bead and the gem duo. I picked up four Miyuki Delica beads in my first color. And then I beaded back through the gem duo and the round 15 seed bead next to it. Now I continue by beading through a Miyuki Delica that is also in the middle of a group. And I will decorate this part in between the two bugle beads that make up a pair that were picked up in the same little group. And I decorate it by picking up three pieces of round 15 seed beads, then a three millimeter Preciosa bicone bead. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then I bead through the nearest round 11 seed bead that is nesting between the two bugle beads, but in the opposite direction. So if you are progressing counterclockwise, like I do, then this time you will bead through the round 11 seed bead clockwise. Then I bead back through the three millimeter bicon and through one of the round 15 seed beads. I adjust my beads a little bit so they look nice and neat. And then I pick up two more round 15 seed beads and I bead through the Delica bead in the middle of the next group. So when I pull my thread, then the new beads make up a little V shape in between the bugle beads. So the bottom of the V shape where the two arms meet, or Y shape actually, uh, so the leg of the Y shape is the bicon bead, the three millimeter bicon bead, and then the arms of the the arms, sorry, the arms of the Y shape are the groups of round fifteen seed beads. <laughs> Uh, 
Kata is asking if Lef Lenka was kept in hostage next to the oven while making making the cabochons. <laughs> well, when when she decides to make some, then she spends the day by making some. It's not so easy these days, these days when the colder weather is coming because they don't dry fast enough. Uh, you need to make sure after shaping them that they dry a bit because you can't move them right away to the kiln. Otherwise, they would be they would be uh, like not flat. <laughs> and thank you, Diane, and happy beading to you during the weekend. And now I will repeat the same over and over. So I bead through around 15 seed bead and the first hole of the gem duo. I pick up four pieces of Miyuki Delica beads and I bead through the other hole of the gem duo, the round 15 seed bead and the next Miyuki Delica. And then again, I make this Y shape in between the bugle beads. Ladies, please let me know if this step is going well because this is a little bit tricky. So I would like to make sure that uh, I explained it well, that you can follow the diagrams and you can make a beautiful piece of chufa. By the way, you might have noticed that today I don't have a coffee, but I have a tea. I'm turning into autumn mood with this, with this beautiful uh, tea mug that I got as, a, got as a gift maybe 10 years ago from my mother-in-law and father-in-law, Adam's parents. And I'm sipping some tea today instead of coffee. Nicolene is step five. And hi, Wendy. And says it's a bit confusing, then let me explain one more time. So I am now exiting a Miyuki Delica that is just in front of a group of bugle, round 11 bugle. I pick up three pieces of round 15 seed beads and a three millimeter Preciosa bicon bead. This is my new combination for now. I'm exiting the Delica and I'm beading in the opposite direction through the round 11 seed bead that is nesting in between two bugle beads. This is how it looks like at the moment. Then I bead back towards the middle of the motif, through the bicon bead and through the last round 15 seed bead that is next to the bicon bead. So I have already one arm, the left arm and the leg of this little decoration finished. Now I pick up two more round 15 seed beads and I bead through the next middle delica that is in, in the middle of a group of three. So the arms of the Y shape, they are made of two pieces of round 15 seed beads and the leg of the Y is made up of a round 15 and a bicon bead. And they are like touching ground in a round 11 uh, Miyuki seed bead, while the arms of the Y are reaching towards two Miyuki Delica beads, both Miyuki Delica beads being in the middle of a group of three. So how is it going and does it make more sense now? I would like to make sure that you can follow it. And Wendy says she has an addiction to mugs. Do you have a favorite? And hi, Joyce, nice to see you. Joyce is figuring out beads, color combinations. <laughs> 
Okay, and let me show it to you one more time. There is a third chance as I am, I am making the third time this, uh, I have to make three times the same step around the motif so I can show it for a third time. So first I bead through around 15 seed bead and a gem duo. Now I pick up four pieces of Miyuki Delica beads and I bead back through the other hole of the same gem duo. I bead through the round 15 that is under it and I bead through a Miyuki Delica bead. So I have my third little like semicircle of Delica beads around the uh, gem duos. And I am now exiting this Miyuki bead here. Now I will add this Y shape between the bugle beads. I nearly said bugle. <laughs> bugle bead. So I start and and absolutely no need to apologize. I am really happy to explain it, okay? And also, uh, if you need more help, then snap a picture, post it in the Beading School Club, and we are there to help you. So here, exiting the Delica, I pick up three pieces of round 15 seed beads. I pick up a three millimeter Preciosa bicone bead, and then I bead through the round 11 seed bead that is in between the two bugle beads in the opposite direction. So if you were progressing from the gem duo to the bugle beads counterclockwise like I did, then in this case you bead it through the round 11 seed bead clockwise. And now I bead back through the preciosa and through the round 15 seed bead. And I pick up two more round 15 seed beads. And I finish this step by beading through the next middle delica, the middle in the middle of a group of three. So this is how it looks like at this moment. And when this says she has a favorite, a horse mug for teas and the born to shop mug in pretty pinks and greens. I, I have a donkey and, and a deer <laughs> on this favorite. <laughs> and and if you are in between the bugles, then you bead back through the bicone and through one of the round 15s, and then you pick up two more round 15s and you bead through the next Delica bead. Okay, and now it's good. Great, I'm really happy. And thanks for asking. Asking is sometimes not easy. At least like I used to have trouble with it in the past. Now I'm doing a lot better, but some even say I talk too much <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, asking when something is not clear, especially during an oven has to be, uh, to be the long workshop is really encouraged. So thank you for asking again. And now in step six, I bead it up through a round 15, a gem duo, and two of the Miyuki Delicas on top of the gem duo. I pick up a round 15 seed bead, and then I continue through the other two Miyuki Delicas on top of the gem duo. I pick up a bugle bead and a Delica. And I bead through the round 11 that is in between the bugles and what that is holding the Y, the, uh, the bicon bead, the Y-shaped decoration. And what's important here, that the Delica, it should sit slightly on top of the bugle bead, so I will not push it 
completely to the edge, but I leave it to rest on top of the end of the bugle bead. I pick now, pick up now one more delica and the bugle, and then I bead through two delicas on top of a gem duo. I pick up around 15 seed bead, and then I continue in the same way, always adding the delica and the bugle bead in between uh, into this big gap and then around 15 in the middle of the group of four. And this week, by the way, uh, I just uh, ordered some new teas for my autumn mood and I was having, unfortunately, my mug is already empty. I can sit it next to my empty coffee cup. <laughs> so I just uh, I just ordered this week some new flavors of tea for me new. And the one that I was having, it's a goji berry apricot one. And I also ordered some yes jasmine flower tea. And I like them both very much. I think I ordered a too little portion of both of them because they will be gone in no time. And I'm still like, I'm not a huge fan of autumn. I'm more of a spring girl when everyone, everything starts to bloom and everything is getting back the energy and the like starting out to move. But I'm just learning to love autumn. I started it last year. Before that, I absolutely hated autumn. Now I'm starting to love it with the colors of the trees. I have a ginkgo tree in front of my window with beautiful yellow yellow leaves. And now I'm really enjoying the, the teas. And uh, actually, as I was walking through the local market today, then I was thinking about it that for me, autumn, there are some flavors which are very, very connected to, to autumn. So for me, it was, I realized it when I was looking at the pumpkins and I was thinking about the pumpkin that my grandma used to make, like she sliced it up and then put it in the oven. She used to have, you know, like a really old oven, even with like real wood burning. So she would make, she would make baked pumpkin in the oven and I like to make a pumpkin a cream soup and those are very very autumnly flavors for me now together with the teas that I am having and I'm wondering do you have some favorite flavors of autumn would you like to share Natalie hi Natalie she says she loves anything pumpkin. And Wendy says, I used to love autumn. As I get older, I still like early autumn, but not the later parts. Makes my bones ache. And uh, I, uh, I actually have that in my, in my feet that I, in the autumn and winter, I always have to wear like slippers and I'm not a slipper girl, slippers and thick socks. <laughs> But yeah, I feel it. <laughs> and Annie says, pumpkin make me think of autumn and butternut squash. <gasps> oh my God, Kata says, I'm roasting the pumpkin in the oven as we speak. Autumn treat food for me and roasted chestnut is priceless. Absolutely. Oh, chestnuts. I love chestnuts. And Ginny says, pumpkin spaghetti squash, squash soup. And of course, the coffees with the pumpkin spice that everyone enjoys this time of year. You know what? I have never had that. I know that like pumpkin spice latte is a thing, but, but I've never had that. Sunshine is getting a package. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> so
So I'm adding now the last little group of Milky Delica and Bugle Beads. And when I pulled my thread, and I don't know how much it's visible, but really the Delicas, they sit on top of the previously added Bugle Beads. So the motif is not flattened. You don't need to sit on it. <laughs> Donna says, pumpkin pie ice cream is awesome. I have never heard of that one. Wendy, Wendy is with me. She also never had a pumpkin spice latte. It's good to know that I'm not alone. It's such a big thing, but somehow, somehow it just never came to my life. I'm, I'm too much of a black coffee without sugar or milk kind of girl. <laughs> And Jenny says she likes a soup with a nice bread when there are cold days. Indeed, there is a very, very nice bakery about like two minutes walking from us. So that's where I went today uh, early in the morning. And I love it when I catch the bread when it's like out of the oven and then you like crunch it and you hear it like how it goes. Oh my God, I love it. And also for breakfast, a nice cheese croissant. <laughs> and Kirsten says, I baked the pumpkin bread for the first time. I loved it. Like, uh, was it like a sweet bread, Kirsten? Or for like to eat it with spreads, with, uh, with butter? Or is it like a dessert, like banana bread? And when this says hearty soup with lots of vegetables and the crisp crusty bread, yummy. And Mary says, hi, Mary. Ginger and turmeric teas are more my autumn drinks. And that's also a really good idea. I think how, how they warm us up. That's a really nice feeling. <laughs> turmeric, I like to have even in my cappuccino or latte. Uh, at, um, I have like, uh, that's basically the only flavored coffee that I, 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 I drink, that I have a powder of ginger and turmeric, and I think cinnamon is in it. And I can mix it into my cappuccino in the morning. It, it's really energizing. <laughs> Oh, Kata loves stew made of wild meat and mushroom, beetroot, apple and pear, red wine from oak barrel. Kata is creative. Kata is really creative, not only with her colors, but also with her food. By the way, the Swedish style mushroom soup that I have uh, learned from you, the recipe, that is, that is also a very autumn thing for me. <laughs> And Faye says, autumn is definitely soup weather made with lots of fruit vegetables. We are going into summer soon. <laughs> Indeed, Faye is on the other hemisphere. So lots of salads on the horizon. Enjoy your nice salads, Faye. <laughs> Natalie says, pumpkin bread with cream cheese. Okay, I have never heard of that one, but I, I really, really want one. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is, I made a pumpkin chocolate chip cookie this year. My new favorite fall cookie. That sounds also really good. I can totally imagine the pumpkin with the, with the chocolate. Kirsten says it's not a sweet bread. Okay. That, that must be really interesting. I'm more of a savory, uh, I'm more for savory uh, taste. So that sounds really good. <laughs> Jessica is making mushroom soups. Ch soup. <laughs> Not beating today, but cooking. That being together is what matters, and you are creating something. Brit Marie says she has never tasted pumpkin. <laughs> never too late. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> 
Do you have a specific reason for it, if I might ask? Or just it somehow never happened? <laughs> In step seven, by the way, I am beading all around the edge of the motif. But when I reach this point that I am exiting a delica, then instead of beading through a round 11 seed bead, I pick up three pieces of my round 15 seed beads. And then I continue. I strengthen the edges of the motif by doing this. Also, so it's a bit of on the fragile side, but if you go around a couple of times, then it will be all right. So I always ju just bead through these two points and I add three pieces of round 15s over the round, ele uh, round 11. Oh, Brit Marie says, for me, a nice mushroom soup and garlic bread is nice autumn food. Now that Adam said that I have made enough mushroom soup for this year, but now that you mentioned the garlic bread and I imagine the garlic bread together with the nice mushroom soup, I might have to make it one more time. And Ginny says, at our house, we have pumpkin things, you are around because it's my husband's favorite pie, frozen dessert, bread, and bun cake. He loves pumpkin everything. <laughs> and Connie says, today we are having both bourguignon from the crock pot. What a nice meal. <laughs> and Corinna, hi. <laughs> so good to see you. Are you okay? How are you doing, Corinne? By the way, before you would all run and start making a mushroom soup or start baking a pumpkin pie, I think it's the best time to finally choose a winner for the Art Nouveau letter writing set. So... This is, this is the prize what I bought for you during the summer when I visited the museum with an exhibition about Art Nouveau. And the task was, I asked you that if you have the Magic Garden box, which was the first one of our Beading School Academy boxes, then the task was to take a picture and to write a bit about your experience. And... Thank you so much for um, uh, to everyone who participated. It was great reading through your, uh, also through the survey that we did last week and also through your comments on the giveaway photo. And I have you all here who posted a picture and wrote about your Magic Garden experience. And now I will select a lucky winner who will receive this Art Novel Letter Writing Set together with her second Reading School Academy box that will be posted next week. Kata! <laughs> so Kata is here with us. Kata, congratulations. And Kata says, I really like the idea to explore a specific theme through beads or how jewelry creation was influenced or impacted by circumstances such as places, ages, people, colors, etc. We are also building stronger connections in this community. Both the usual cyberspace and the lunch breaks bring us together. I appreciate the richness of the bead box. It can also be challenging to work with predefined beads, but it's almost like creating a jewelry collection for the season based on certain prerequisites while you still have extra material to develop your own ideas. So much fun. Can't wait to discover the next one's subject. So thank you so much, Kata, for what you wrote and to everyone who participated. Your, your prize, it will travel to you next week with your 
Fuchsia box, Fuchsia box full of the new goodies. And everyone, if you would like to find out what's inside the box. Actually, I asked you yesterday, I also received a package from the Beading School Treasury. But what do you think? What's inside the third package that I did not open for the picture? This is it. This is it. You can recognize the specific shape. The boxes will also always come in this nice elegant shape. This matchbox style that you can open it. No picking, no picking. I'm not showing anything yet. So if you would like to see what's inside the next week, Tuesday, during uh, coffee time with Erica, then I'm drinking coffee, no goji berry tea, no jasmine bloom tea, then jasmine flower tea. Then I will open the fuchsia box and show you what's inside. <laughs> And by the way, the boxes are already fully packed for you, but you might know that we also have this option that if you want to take full advantage of it, then you can, you can order without paying extra shipping costs now. So we can pack everything together with your box and they will travel together and there will be no extra charges for shipping. So you can do that until midnight Sunday if you would like us to send something extra with your box. <laughs> Kata will get a big, big extra package. <laughs> so, and I am now in step eight. And actually, <laughs> I mix it up a little bit because you can do these last two steps in two ways. You can pick up two beads in step seven and add a third bead in the middle in step eight, or you can do it in another way how I am doing it now that I already picked up three beads in step seven. And then when I'm beading all around the motif, one more time in step eight, then I skip the middle bead. I beat only through the first one and the last one. So this is how it's looking at the moment. And afterward, I will connect the ear stud and I will connect with a loop of size 15 seed beads, this hanging part to the bottom to complete my earring. I will post a picture afterward. And if you have any questions left, ladies, then please let me know because I am now making the finishing touches on my earring and everyone is getting hungry, so <laughs> it's time to finish. Tomorrow we will see each other again. We can see each other again for the lunch break, for the Beading School Academy lunch break. I will be waiting for you and I would love to see your creations. So if you would like to uh, join the lunch break room tomorrow, then if you can, then please bring your jewels that you have made from the Magic Garden box and I would love to hear what you have learned from all the tutorials and everything to see what you have made and so on. <laughs> Sunshine is not hungry, by the way. She's enjoying the gift chocolate that we sent to her. <laughs> I hope you like it. <laughs> So thank you so much, ladies. Vania just joined us. Thank you so much, ladies. I'm sorry, but we are at the end now. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining me today and for keeping each other company. Please make sure to post your pictures and show each other what you have created so we can uh, inspire each other and celebrate all the different variations that we have beaded. See you next week, Tuesday, with the next Academy Box and wishing you a beautiful weekend.
Goodbye.